wherever it is you are, it is good to see you. I can see you. Through eyes of faith, I know you're there. And I want to welcome you to our service here at ICC Mombasa. I invite you to participate. Whatever you do, don't sit down and watch. Participate. If people are singing, sing. If they are dancing, dance. When listening to the word, get out your notepad and write. And when we are praying, pray. Because I want to say in the words of Jesus, according to your faith, let it be done to you. Enjoy the service today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this service. We pray that, Lord, you would be with us. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may actually see you. See you beyond the musicians and the singers. See you beyond the announcements. See you beyond the preacher. Let your words come alive in our hearts as they are spoken to us. And let our lives never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Every second Sunday of every month, we celebrate communion here at ICC Mombasa. And um, every time we do this, I remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 26. Matthew 26, and I will just read it. Um, it is verse 25 or 26, yes. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it um, in new with you in my Father's kingdom. And then the verse 30 says, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And verse 30 had nothing to do with communion. It is just to say that Jesus also sang hymns for those of you who just like choruses. But when I think about communion, I am reminded even the word communion speaks about fellowship. It speaks about togetherness. It speaks about the love that Jesus had, enough for him to leave his throne in glory and come and die for you and for me. And without that death, you and I would be dead, either literally or figuratively, but we would be separated from God eternally. So as we take communion today, I want to ask you to think about Jesus. Think about him whether you are a born-again believer or not. If you are not a born-again believer, think about this. Jesus gave up everything so that you can be saved. And because of that, I am inviting you to ask Jesus into your heart. And then we'll take communion together with you as well. And if you would like someone to pray with you to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, please send a text to the number on your screen. But if you are a believer, then think about this. Jesus gave up the most precious thing, which according to us would be the throne and the title, the things that we hold on so dearly to so that we don't want to serve God. And then he came and he gave his life for you. And so I'll invite us to just meditate on that for a while and then as we do this let us partake of the bread together and if you are at home you can actually set out your own elements your own bread and your own cup and you take communion with us and it says that after he had taken of the cup he gave thanks and then he took the the cup and after he gave thanks he partook of it and he said um, this is my blood shed for you let's take the cup together and Lord Jesus this morning we give you thanks because of your love for us, because you left everything that, humanly speaking, we can call precious, so that you would die for us, that we may have eternal life. And in this life, O oh Lord, we have access to you. We are able to call your name when we have need. We are able to call your name when we are in trouble. We are able to call on your name to just give thanks. And so we pray. Lord, that for every need that is represented here today, would you meet it? Because you know it in its detail, O oh Lord, better than any of us humans can know, better than any pastor can know. And we pray that you would meet the needs of your people in the detail of that need. And we are looking forward to hearing testimonies of your doing because you are God and you are able. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And while we are still praying, I want us to pray for the nation of Kenya. You see, God is so kind to us as a people. God is the righteous judge. But any time he pronounces judgment, he always gives us an opportunity to repent. I was thinking earlier, yesterday and today, 
about 2020 and up to now and how fast we they were locusts and before we were um, through with the locusts there was COVID and then now we are in famine and, and drought and I was thinking God what is going on and, and the Lord said but I already said to you guys if you see these things in 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 if you see that I have commanded the locusts to come or if you see that I have uh, held back the reins and then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land and I want to invite us to go ahead and do those things because we are God's people called by his name and to humble ourselves before God and to pray so let us pray for our nation right now Heavenly Father we pray here at ICC Mombasa we pray and even on online wherever it is that we are watching this we pray and we humble ourselves before you because Lord no one is righteous no not one and so we ask that first of all you will forgive us forgive us for where we have had your instructions we have not paid attention forgive us for the times where we have thought of ourselves more highly than we ought forgive us Lord for when we have seen things and have instructions from your word on how to do what we need to do when we see these things and we have not done them and we pray Lord that you will hear us from heaven that you will forgive us O Lord as a nation forgive us of all the atrocities that we have done as a people more so as your people and we pray O God that you would turn our fortunes turn the tide O Lord we pray for the people that are suffering in the drought stricken areas with famine and everything Lord would you send the rain there has been no rain in some places for two years now would you send rain O God send rain in the physical sense but send the rain of your spirit as well and let us say in the coming days that contrary to the predictions of the people that are predicting things when we humbled ourselves we saw our God come through and we pray Lord that you would heal our land heal this our land and nation we thank you and honor you in Jesus name we pray Amen. I'd like to welcome the music team to lead us in this declaration so you can stand up and join us
week one very popular swahili saying has been on my heart kutoa ni moyo i have seen this in practice i have seen um, i have seen school children who really don't have a lot of money believe in a cause and give towards it and then i have seen adult people who have a lot of money look at the same cause and think ah uh, Nah, it's not as important. And the lesson that the Lord taught me in all of this is this. Kuto animoy. Now the question, and if you don't understand Swahili, that means giving is an issue of the heart. Giving to the Lord is always a matter of the heart. And as we give today, I want to ask you, look at your heart. And look at the things that you give your money to, to do. You'll find that where you have put money, your heart is. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I am praying for you and I am praying for myself that our hearts will be in the purposes of God. So that as we give our offering today, or our tithe, or our designated giving, we will give it in a way that shows that our hearts are there. The details for how you can give are on your screen right now. So let's pray even as we give. Heavenly Father, we pray today that our hearts will be where our treasure is. Or our treasure will be where our hearts are. And as we give, our giving will reflect how much we treasure you. Our giving will reflect how much we value you. It will show the things that we believe are important. Because your word says, that um, to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and then all of these things will be added to us so would you bless our time of giving and may you receive our offerings from our hearts O lord for the glory and honor of your name in jesus name we pray amen we would like to invite you and give you the opportunity to worship the lord with your giving all of the details on how you can give are on your screen right now. There are several ways in which you can give here at ICC Mombasa. If you are giving through M-Pesa, our pay bill number is 488508. I will repeat that, 488508. For account, you write offering or tithe or special offering or whatever it is that you are giving towards. You can also give through our equity bank till, and the till number is 488508. If you would like to give through PayPal, Sendwave, Wildremit, Simba, or any other app that you can use, the details are also on your screen right now. Our bank account number is 100,000 and our account is domiciled at NCBA Bank. Our SWIFT code is on your screen and our PayPal email address is info at iccmombasa.org info at iccmombasa.org Thank you so much for your giving to the work of the Lord. God bless you. morning it's the second sunday of the month of november and uh, this far god has brought us i am so so happy uh, just to look back and see the grace of god and the goodness of god in uh, 
how he has enabled us to come this far, the things that we have done. And uh, I'm excited to be having you here today, even as we share in the Word of God. Something I'd like you to do very quickly. If you would go ahead and pick your phone and text everyone you know, and uh, maybe even call them and tell them, hey, the service on Raya TV or the service online uh, on YouTube or Facebook is about to begin or uh, the, the ICC Mombasa website, live.iccmombasa.org and tell them to join in and watch together with you because this is very important. What I'm sharing with us today is something that I believe will trigger your, uh, your thinking in a certain direction and, and, and this has the potential of changing your life. It has the potential to change your life. And so call everyone you know, ask them to join in. Let's pray together and uh, begin even sharing the word of God. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity, for us to be able to share your word together. I pray that you will draw in our friends, our relatives, our, uh, our colleagues, even as we share these. And I pray that, Lord, you will indeed impact us. Let your word speak to me. Let your word speak to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so just like sun, the last Sunday, I'm sharing a very deeply personal uh, sermon. You see, when you have come uh, to the place where I am at in my ears, you know, where you can look back and say, I have lived almost half a century, then uh, you, you begin reflection. You begin reflecting on, uh, on life. And uh, you realize that the way you lived... <laughs> Uh, you know, before the half a century mark and the way you live after this, you know, is, is going to be very different. And something I'd like to say that uh, the problems, the challenges and the temptations that you face uh, beyond the half the century mark are going to be greatly influenced by what you did before. And it would be possible actually to eliminate the problems, the challenges and temptations of tomorrow by the way you live today. We are speaking uh, about a subject that is very close to my heart and you will see why I'm saying that you need to live today in such a way that you eliminate the temptations, the challenges and problems of tomorrow. Last Sunday we began a sermon series. We asking the question, how are you doing? And I'd like to actually ask you that question very straight. How are you doing? How are you doing? And uh, before you give me the cliche answers, I'm fine, I'm well, it's okay with me, I'm good. Uh, just pause and allow me to ask that question again. How are you really doing? Because that's very important. Last Sunday we were talking about, you know, just living in the darkness of the anxiety, the problems, the grief and all that. Today we are looking at the subject of health. How are you doing? You see, simply because you have not been to the doctor, uh, for several months or because you're not taking medication right now, it's very easy for you to answer me and tell me I am well But the truth of the matter is you could be in trouble, but you think you're well You could be in trouble and uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I am saying you could be in trouble and you're thinking that you are doing well Health is not ju just about medicine or drugs and seeing a doctor it's every area of your life and especially mental health and then emotional health and physical health and each one of them and if i may add spiritual health also and each one of them impacts the other and you will see that in just a moment as we begin to dig in and, and unravel this whole aspect of health because we need to live healthy we are not well if we are not living healthy we are not well if our health is not well, if our, uh, our bodies are not well. In fact, uh, have you been struggling to wake up in the morning? You know, how, how do you get out of bed? Do you wake up lethargic? Do you wake up tired? Do you wake up with, uh, you know, sometimes wondering, you know, what if I was allowed to just sleep a few more minutes? Do you feel like you have energy as you go through the day when it gets to the afternoon? Do you just want to lie and sleep and, or, or, or do you have the energy to be able to continue to go through the day? Another thing that I'd like to ask, have you been having headaches after headache after headache? Our generation is living so unhealthy, but we think it's cool. It's the reason why uh, in the 70s we had Panadol. Um, and then there was no headaches, if, if I remember correctly, uh, there was uh, Cafeno. Those were enough to cure your pain. And then we got into the 80s and uh, suddenly, uh, you know, there was headaches 
and a few other uh, drugs that were introduced. You come into the 90s, though it was not just Panadol, but now there was Panadol Extra. You come into the 2000s, there is not only Panadol Extra, there is Panadol Advance. Brufen, when I was growing up as a child, used to be medication that a doctor pre prescribed. Today, you can buy Brufen over the counter. In fact, I know, I, I know kiosks, you know, little shops that are stocking Brufen, painkiller. Because you, as you go through the day, you have headache, you have pain, and uh, what do you do? You pop a pill, you, you take a headaches, or you take a Panadol Advance, or you take another painkiller. It simply means that you are not doing well. There is something wrong somewhere. Maybe it's the amount of water that uh, you have taken. Have you taken enough water? You know, uh, it could be other things. You're living with too much stress. You're living with too much anxiety. You're living with too much worry. And we need to be able to deal with these things. And so before you say you are well, you need to sit back and ask yourself, how is my health? How is my health? Earlier on, I told you that the challenges, the problems, and the temptations you face tomorrow can actually be dealt with today. You can, you can eliminate them. You can deal with them. You need to determine that you are going to do that. You see, um, those problems, those challenges, those temptations, when you determine to deal with them today before they happen, you'll have set yourself to live a victorious life. I read a story in the Reader's Digest about a retired couple who decided to, uh, th that they should walk two miles every day. And uh, that's approximately, approximately about 3.2 kilometers. And so they were going to walk one kilometer, you know, one way. And so that they, on their way back, they'll be able to, uh, you know, cover the, the second kilometer. And so they chose to walk uh, this uh, one kilometer, uh, this uh, one mile in uh, a, a, a deserted country road. And so they walked, when they got to the one mile mark and they needed to, uh, to either go forward uh, so that they could add miles or to, to walk back, uh, the husband uh, turned to his wife and asked her, do you think you can, make, uh, you can make it to walk another mile? And she said, oh yeah, I am well, I am not tired, I'm able to do it. And he said, okay, uh, I, am, I am too tired, I can't continue. So you walk back, go home, get the car and come and pick me. He was done. He was done. And uh, to avoid getting to where that man got, where you cannot be able to go another mile, you feel worn out, you feel done, you need then to begin to observe some things about your health. The Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8, 8, physical training is good. But training for godliness is far much better promising benefits in this life and in the one to come. And so allow me uh, to borrow something out, out of uh, Anchor. There's a class we teach here at ICC Mombasa called Anchor. And uh, I, I talked to the author and uh, he gave me permission to pick some of the content and be able to bring it here. And I'd like to uh, just say some things and, and I'm actually literally going to read uh, what it says in the Anchor manual. You know, uh, just asking us some questions. Let me ask you the following. How are you doing in your physical health? Are you healthy physically? You see, many people want to be successful in life. Many want to accomplish their purpose. They want to accomplish their dreams. But they don't realize that physical health is a huge part of that accomplishment. That if you're not well physically, you will not be able to accomplish your goals. You'll not be able to be successful. You'll not be able to pursue the things that you desire to pursue. And you will not be able to serve God and accomplish what God desires of you. And so you need to pause and ask yourself, you know, if health is so critical, then what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Physical health, as I said earlier, does not consist of just seeing a doctor and taking medication. It includes everything else about life. And I'd like to cover some things here very quickly. So that you and I can be able to live the life that God meant for us to live. In 3 John verse 2, the following prayer is offered by uh, the Apostle John. He says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. And so that's a prayer. And I pray that prayer for you too. That it will go well with you and you'll be in good health. It's that important to God. 
Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse number 10, you know, quoting a part of that, uh, in, in fact, uh, let me just go ahead and read it uh, from the Bible. It says, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then Jesus went on to say, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it even more abundantly. That, that's what Jesus came for, so that you could live more abundantly. You know, live life and live it more abundantly. And here is the thing, living more abundantly includes being healthy in every area of your life. That, that's it. it. It includes, if I may de define it, being, being healthy in your life is both, um, or even, uh, let me add a few more things. I wanted to say both mental health and physical health, but I'd like to add emotional health and spiritual health. All that is part of what Jesus meant when he said, so that you may have life and have it even more abundantly. Medical science tells us that uh, a lot of our sicknesses, a lot of our body issue, illnesses and all, are psychosomatic. That simply means that they are mind-induced or mind-assisted. Which means that your mental health determines or influences your physical health. You know, think about that for a moment. In fact, it's biblical what science says because the Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse number 30, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. As in literally, your bones begin to rot. That's what the Bible is saying. Another verse that I'd like to bring up is uh, what the Bible says in uh, Proverbs 17, verse number 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones and so me your mental health being anxious being worried you know not having peace and all that determines how your your, your physical health goes and so you and i need to become cheerful because the bible is saying a cheerful heart is good medicine we need to ensure that we are living at peace we are not worried and anxious because if we don't live that way and we allow envy and uh, competition and looking at other people and what they are doing and and, and just competing with the uh, with the, can, can i say the kamau and the otienos you will end up at the place where you're so stressed so worked up and your physical health will be affected and so you need to do that no wonder the Bible says we need to be renewed in the thinking of our minds. Because when our minds are renewed, we'll begin to think the way that we ought to. And this will influence our physical health. We'll be able to live a healthy life. Now, the interesting thing is, if the mind affects our physical body, the flip side of that coin is also true. That your physical health influences your mental health. And, and, and uh, even the, the way you think and uh, the, the way you process information. A research that was done by the Harvard Health uh, Institute uh, says that regular exercise toughens the mind as well as the body. Physical exercise, it toughens the mind as well as the body. In the, in the research that they did, they got a group uh, you know, of people and divided them into two groups. One group was, uh, you know, just encouraged to go about their, their, their normal physical activities. And they looked for people who are physically active, you know, climb the stairs instead of taking a lift, uh, people who walk, uh, you know, people who uh, are on their feet working. They're not always uh, living a sedentary lifestyle. And the other group was actually told to go ahead and exercise and ensure they are physically fit, like jogging, um, going to the gym, and uh, doing regular exercises. It was discovered that the group that committed themselves to regular exercise and, and jogging and stuff like that were 20% fitter after six months of working out. Um, but that's not the only observation. The other observation that I find very interesting, and it's what uh, triggered me to uh, bring this uh, you know, little quote exercise here, is uh, that, that they were discovered to be 70% better in making decisions quicker, wiser decisions, more complex uh, decisions, that their decision-making ability had improved. Their mind was working better simply because they, they pushed themselves to exercise. And so being physically uh, active is not enough. You need to get to the place where you begin to exercise, you know, on purpose. You know, you might be having a car, you might be using matatu uh, to go to work and stuff like that, but you get to the place where this becomes your friend. You are able to pick your bike and you are able to ride five kilometers, maybe to, uh, you know, 10 kilometers. 
you know, be begin to push yourself to physical exercise. That's what it's saying. It improves your mind. Now, I told you it was a flip side. So the mind influences your physical health and your physical health influences your mind. It's a cycle. Make sure it's not a vicious cycle that takes you down. Because if your mind is not doing well, your physical health will not do well. If your physical health is not doing well, you will end up at the place where your mind gets worse. And so you go down and down and down. In this day and age, we can't afford that. We need to lift things. We need to do better. We need to ensure that we are doing better. And so that's why I already quoted this for you, that the Bible in First Timothy chapter 4, verse number, eight, uh, verse number 8, that physical exercise is of some benefit. The Bible is not saying that it's not beneficial. Like some people would want to say, forget physical exercise and focus on godliness. No, the Bible is saying physical exercise is of benefit. And so we need to reap that benefit. We need to work at it because we'll become better in serving God, living life, honoring God and glorifying him. We need to get to the place where we are very careful with what we are eating. And so it's not just riding the bike. Think about it. How has your meal been? Is this the stuff you've been eating? You know? Fried foods, fried foods, fried foods, fried foods. Everything here is fried. This, this will destroy you. It will destroy your mind. It will destroy your physical body. And it will destroy your mind. And it will destroy your physical body. And then it will destroy your mind. And then it will destroy your physical body. And before you know it, you are living life far away from God's purposes. This, sugar. You've got to be careful. Because, friends, I propose to us today that if you change the way you live, if you change what you eat, if you change the things that you do, if you work at it, based on medical research and based on the Bible, you are going to get better at serving God, living life, honoring uh, God, and, and accomplishing the things that God would have you accomplish. Let me narrow this down. And simply say to us, our health is very important to God. Our health is very important to God. And so we need to ensure that we are not harming our bodies. We are not harming uh, God's purpose for our lives. We are not harming the things that God uh, would desire for us to accomplish. So that we can live the life that God has for us. Can I give you five biblical reasons why you need to work at your physical health? To work at your nutrition, to work at your mental health, so that you can live the life that God meant for you. Five, just five reasons. Very quickly, the first one. When we care for our bodies, we honor and please God. When we care for our bodies, we honor and please God. You see, my friends, um, if we only knew how precious we are to God, we will begin to live our lives very carefully. Just imagine, Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for us so that we would live for God, so that we would honor God, so that we would accomplish God's purposes, so that he would reconcile us back to God. And our natural response needs to be saying, God, I will live for you. I will seek you. Thank you for, for, for choosing to love me and care for me. Here I am. I want to honor and glorify you all the days of my life. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, Brethren, by the masses of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And so we should present healthy, well taken care of, nourished bodies, not sickly, worn out and dying bodies. Because how do you present to the God that loves you a gift that is worn out, a gift that is weary, a gift that is not physically fit? It's not good. You know, remember in the Old Testament, God used to say sickly and maimed animals that are not good. He doesn't want them. But here we are. The Bible is telling us to present our bodies to God and we are presenting bodies. You know, we tend to think that that scripture just talks about uh, holy, you know, presenting ourselves as holy before God. But the Bible is not giving a definition. It simply says present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Let that living sacrifice be a good sacrifice. Let it be a healthy sacrifice. Let it be an exercise uh, sacrifice. Let it be one that you are pleased of because it's been fed well. Because you are valuable and important to God. That, that, that's what I told us. You are valuable to God. And so present your body unto God as a way of honoring and pleasing him. Number two, because I'm giving you five uh, reasons. I have four to go. Number two, 
when we care for our bodies, we are caring for God's temple. Yep. The Bible says this. I'll read it for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? I know if you read that scripture in context, it talks about uh, uh, the whole aspect of sexual sin. But think about it. Because the Apostle Paul says there are many sins that uh, we, we do and uh, they affect our bodies. And so it's not just sexual, uh, sexual sin. And uh, how, how, what have you been eating? Because if you've been eating stuff like this, without putting in vegetables and fruits, you are at the place where you are defiling God's temple. And so you need to work at your uh, at your diet and change it, so that you can honor and glorify and serve God. The Bible tells us that our bodies are God's temple. Number three. We are stewards of everything that God created. And God created our bodies. And then he entrusted them to us so that we could care for them. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 10, the Bible says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. And so if God created your body and he gave it to you, you live in that body. Then you've got to be a good steward who takes care of their body for the glory and praise of God. Number four. We need our bodies to accomplish God's will and purpose. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I give you a car and you're supposed to use it to go to Nakuru from Mombasa, or you're supposed to use it from uh, you know, Nairobi going to Kampala, and you do not use it, you do not take care of it and ensure that it's working properly, you service it and all that, you're not going to be able to arrive where you're supposed to be going. And you and I have a destiny, a place that God has called us to go. And if you don't take care of your body, you will not be able to get there and do the things that God desires of you. Psalm 103, verse number 14, the Bible says, For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. And so if God remembers what our bodies can be able to take or what they can't take. You need to be careful to ensure that you're not abusing your body. And so you're resting, you're sleeping enough, you're eating the right way that you're supposed to, uh, to eat. You're not living in stress and anxiety and worry all the time. Take care of that body because a well taken care of body, you know, will be, help you to be able to accomplish God's purpose. A nipple a day keeps the doctor away, but that's not the only thing it does. It improves your memory. You know, bananas improve your memory. Oranges give you the strength that you need, and they give you vitamin C to keep germs and viruses and bacteria away. And I can go on and just talk about uh, this. Vegetables, not just fruits. Eat vegetables. You become better. You know, at, at thinking, when you avoid oily foods, you allow your brain to be able to think. You allow your body to be able to move uh, and you find yourself having more energy when you're not eating foods that take you down, but you eat foods that lift you. And so do that. Watch that because you need, God, you need that body to be able to accomplish what God has called and purpose for you. All right. Number five. I am done with this. Number five, we need to exercise self-love by caring for our bodies. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, Mark chapter 12, verse number 20, uh, 31, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. One of the things I've come to realize why we don't love people in this day is because we don't love ourselves. And because you don't love yourself, you'll not be able to love other people. Could you love that body a little bit more? Take care of it, nourish it, care for it. And, and, and I'm not saying caring for your body is going to, uh, you know, eat chips and, and chicken, you know, fried stuff and all that. That's not caring. That's destroying your body. Please, that's not caring for your body. No, when you get on your bike and you exercise, when you go to the gym, when you jog in the morning, you know, and, and, and uh, you ensure you're physically fit, when you exercise, even if it's in the house, whatever it is that you do, that's a way of caring for your body. Care for that body because you need to do it. You need to do it. Do not be reckless. Do not destroy what God has given you. Ensure that you're honoring and serving God's purposes. I'd like to finish by quoting this verse, Colossians 3, 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Do everything as unto the Lord. Take care of that body. Work hard. Exercise. Do it for the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help us 
to take care of these bodies, to exercise, to eat well, to live the way that we ought to, to care for our minds, to care for our bodies. Help us, Lord, to live in such a way that tomorrow will not have physical issues and challenges and health issues that would have dealt today by just ensuring we exercise, we eat well, we live well for the honor and praise of your name. I pray that God, every one of us, will enjoy good health. I pray for those who are unwell that you will bring healing. But I pray, Lord, help us to see the things we need to work on so that we can live to honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining in and being part of this. And so let when that question is asked again, how are you doing? The answer be, I know I am doing well. Bye-bye. God bless you.